the bountiful sea, pristine water. In Japanese culture, ingredients nurtured by the blessings of each season are eaten in their raw form. The art of cutting has long been pursued within the culinary discipline, elevated to unparalleled levels of refinement. Japanese cuisine focuses on maximizing the flavors of ingredients and valuing aesthetic beauty, and its cutting techniques have been bestowed with special significance. Let us explore a book that delves deep not only into these revered techniques, but into their historical background and cultural significance as well. The Encyclopedia of Japanese Cuisine, Mukoita, the Sacred Red Sea Bream, and an overview of cutting techniques. Sashimi, or Mukozuke, is held in high esteem in Japanese cuisine. It originated based on the idea that eating fish and vegetables purified with sacred water and offered to the gods would grant one with vitality. The culinary professionals who handle this sacred food are known as mukoita. The name comes from manaita, meaning cutting board. In addition to exhibiting technical expertise, the mukoita is responsible for maintaining the freshness of the fish and overseeing the entire cooking process, and therefore frequently serves as a head chef. Throughout history, Red Sea Bream has been revered not only for its beauty and color, but also for its delightful taste earning it the status of both a prized delicacy and a sacred fish. There is a rule for positioning the fish. The head should be facing left and the stomach toward the person. Whether offering it to the gods or placing it on a cutting board, the head should always face left. Haraotemaeno The slaughtering method is crucial for maintaining a fish's freshness. One particular technique used for high-end fish such as red sea bream is known as shinke jime. The fish is pierced above and behind the eyes with a hook, and the spine is severed by cutting through the base of the gills. A wire is threaded through the spinal cord from the tail to the head, destroying the nerves. Finally, the fish is immersed in cold water and bled out. By piercing the fish's brain and severing the spinal cord, muscles remain relaxed and the freshness is maintained. Let us take a look at the Encyclopedia of Japanese Cuisine, Mukoita 1, to learn about one of the most standard methods for filleting red sea bream into three pieces, Sammai Oroshi. When using a knife, it is important to stand with good posture and maintain appropriate space between your body and the cutting board to ensure smooth movements. Stand at about a 45 degree angle to the cutting board with your feet shoulder width apart. Have the cutting board at the height of your navel and keep a distance of 10 centimeters. After the scales and innards are removed, the head is cut off. Place the fish with the stomach side facing you. Hold down the fish with your left hand. Insert the knife from the head side. 
and cut along the bones until you hit the spine. Next, fillet the top uwami side. Place the fish with the bones on the cutting board, make an incision in the skin along the edge of the dorsal fin, and continue cutting along the bones. Once you reach the base of the tail, cut off the fillet. Sammai oroshi results in the uwami, shitami, and spine. Please refer to the Encyclopedia of Japanese Cuisine, Mukoita 1, for more detailed instructions on filleting sea bream. Now, let us proceed to making sashimi. Hirazukuri is one of the most common cutting techniques for sashimi. Place the fillet parallel to the cutting board and hold it with your left hand. Position the base of the blade against the fillet at an angle. Then slide the knife towards you to cut seven to eight millimeter slices. Hegi zukuri is a method commonly used for whitefish like sea bream or flatfish, which have a firm texture. The knife is laid flat against the fish and a shaving motion is employed. Hoso zukuri involves making thin vertical cuts and is particularly suitable for fish that have undergone kobujime. Kobujime involves lightly salting raw fish fillet and putting it up against kombu kelp that has been soaked with some water. This allows for the fish to have moisture extracted from it while being imparted with the aroma and umami of kombu. In addition to the meat, a red sea bream's head can be grilled, simmered, or used in soups. Let us see how the head is cut when making arani stew. Parts such as the head, spine, and collar, which are left over after filleting the fish, are called ara, and they are stewed with a sweet and salty flavor. The bones and flesh release plenty of umami, resulting in a deep, complex flavor. This dish exemplifies the Japanese spirit of treasuring and savoring every part of the ingredient, leaving nothing to waste. In addition to red sea bream, the book also contains instructions on how to fillet fish, such as Japanese amberjack and salmon, using the sammai oroshi technique. The artistry of knife techniques tailored to the unique attributes of different ingredients has been a hallmark of Japanese cuisine. Kappo is a style of high-end Japanese cuisine, characterized by customers seated at a counter while the chef meticulously prepares sashimi and an array of dishes on a cutting board and serves them promptly. This showcases the ongoing tradition of a master chef, displaying the quintessential cooking skill of brilliant knife work. 
the origin of this can be traced back to a ritual called Shikibocho, which originated in the latter half of the Heian period. In the ritual, chefs handle ingredients without touching them by deftly controlling long chopsticks with sharp metal tips and a knife crafted by a swordsmith. One can also observe this commitment to hygiene in the garnishes accompanying sashimi. They are thought to have originated from the fact that foods such as wasabi and daikon were eaten with fish as an antidote to prevent food poisoning. While cutting food into bite-sized pieces through various techniques is a display of hospitality, the cutting method itself can elevate the flavor to new heights. Although this simple act of cutting may not be viewed as cooking, it embodies various meanings and techniques, and perhaps gaining an understanding of this is the first step to mastering Japanese cuisine.